Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about CentOS 8. CentOS is the new Linux distribution from Red Hat. Uh, well, it's actually not from Red Hat directly. It's a CentOS, the project that Red Hat maintains. It basically takes the Red Hat Enterprise Linux source code and makes a OS out of it that uh, you don't have to pay the licensing and the support costs to. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it and uh, let's try spinning it up in a VM and checking it out. So let's take a look at CentOS here and see what it has to offer. So first things first, I just installed it in a VM, so we need to first accept the license terms. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to hit finish configuration. And I'm trying this out in GNOME boxes, so which is a new virtualization environment to me. So we're about to find out how well this works. I had issues of trying to get it to run in VirtualBox, and apparently that was a known issue. So we're going to see how well it works in boxes. This system has two gigs of RAM assigned to it. I tried to assign more, but boxes wouldn't let me. I mean, it said it would, but it kept crashing on me. So I have eight gigs on this system. I don't know if there was too much being taken up by the rest of the system or something, but uh, let's see if we can get that bar out of the way. Oh, it's not full screen. That's why. So this right here, you can see this is the GNOME desktop. It's... Uh, um, in the interest of full disclosure, I've already used this a little bit, so this isn't really so much a first impression. Uh, this is more like a second impression, because I haven't used it much. Um, but it, I, I have to say I like it so far, what I've, uh, what I've seen of it. Uh, you can see it's running 4.18 for the kernel here. And so, you know, as usual, CentOS ships with a kind of an older kernel. And... Um, you know, so that gives you that stability that you would expect from CentOS. So I'm going to type in my password here for root, and I typed it wrong. Uh, let's try this again. Well, the welcome screen decided to come up. That, that was a delay. Yes, we'll turn that off. Why not? And yeah, okay. So let's try this again. SU, and we're going to switch in to, oh yeah, the help dialog. That always comes up on the first time, too. And let's go ahead and type in the password, and this time it worked. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install the GNOME Tweak tool here, because I want to see what the story is on that, and I want to change this. One of the things I don't like about the GNOME desktop is you have those three buttons at the top of the window on most desktop environments, right? On GNOME, by default, you have one. Now, some distros like Ubuntu will alter that out of the box, and I have to say I really like it for the most part when the distro ships the desktop environment as is, but, um, you know, that I'm sorry, but the GNOME desktop is too minimalistic, too, minimal, too minimalistic, I can't talk today, and... It's, it, it's crazy to go this minimalistic, okay? Give me three buttons, okay? I want to minimize, a maximize, and a close button on all windows, okay? Maybe not dialogues, but like, you know, like a full desktop application, like a web browser, you should be putting all three of those buttons on there. It's just, it's stupid. Anyhow, so now Tweaks is being installed, the GNOME Tweak tool. And when that gets done installing, I'm going to open this up and immediately turn on those two buttons using the Tweak tool. That's literally one of the first things I do when I install one of the uh, OSs that ship like this with the GNOME 3 desktop and do not actually alter that. And I think it's under Utilities. It is not. Okay. Oh, it's right there. It's next to Utilities. All right. So we're going to open this up here. And another thing I'm going to change, I like the dark theme, the dark theme better, so we're going to go ahead and change to that. And let's see here. I believe it's in Windows. And here it is. Yes, yeah, software updates. We'll get there in a minute, okay? Now, see down here, if you turn these buttons on, look. Doesn't that look better? Also, you can move them to the left or the right. I honestly don't really like them on the left, but whatever. Um, the right seems to be the right place for them. But see, now I can maximize my windows if I don't like double-click on the menu bar and stuff. So, anyway, whatever. So we got that. Let's go take a look at what Firefox it's going to ship with here and just kind of explore the OS a little bit for your viewing pleasure and for my interest. Because honestly, I, even though I have explored the OS a little bit, I don't remember what Firefox was on it. I, I don't remember much about it. I remember, uh, for, for one thing, there wasn't that much software available. It seemed like yet the... Um, 
the Apple repo doesn't seem to have everything in it yet that, you know, you would expect it to have from previous CentOS builds. So uh, I don't know if that's uh, just they're taking time to build it or, you know, what's going on with that. But um, some of the stuff that I'm used to seeing is not there. Um, but anyways, um, you know, it's it's a base system. Uh, you're probably going to use it as a server anyways. Uh, CentOS can be used on the desktop, but it's really... It's more of a server OS, arguably. Um, but again, I am running desktop build. You don't have to do that. There is a, a server build where it's just the command line. Um, but let's take a look now that it's loaded up here. I think it's under, here it is, right here, help about Firefox. So they are shipping, not a surprise, the extended support release. I expect that. And they're shipping that here for CentOS and Red Hat 1.0, which um, I'm not really sure what it says 1.0, but I'm not really sure what that's about. But anyway, uh, they're shipping 60.5.1 ESR. Um, memory serves correct. That's kind of old. Um, but again, it's expected behavior in CentOS for them to ship something a little older. And, you know, it works. Um you know, the whole point of installing CentOS is, for those that don't know, is for stability, right? You're not shipping, here's their little uh, privacy notice on Firefox. They don't, they're not going to ship you something that is going to be new, right? They're shipping stuff that they know is stable. And so that's what they do with this. And, you know, you can find more about that on their website here. But that's kind of the general consensus is, we're going to ship stuff we know is not going to crash because this is used in business. This is used in government. This is used in situations where we need it to run. And it's okay to ship something a little bit older on it. Um, we got rhythm box, cheese. I did uh, only select some of the settings in the installer. So this is kind of more of a minimal install. But that's generally the way I like my Linux installs. I like to kind of populate it with what I feel the need for. But I still like the standard like GNOME uh, stuff in here, like system monitor and things like that. You know, these are just things you still need. You need the GNOME terminal or, or some kind of terminal emulator. Uh, and not only do you need a terminal em emulator, but, you know, it'd be nice to have, you know, something like this where you can see what your processes is. And as you can see here, you know, they, they've got the system pretty busy. Let's see how much CPU it's using. Okay. Um, looks like that all the cores are active, but pretty low. Um, looks like the highest CPU is about 6 or 7% uh, at its peak uh, that I'm seeing here. But most of, the, most of them seems to be around 2 to 5%. Uh, we're using about a gig and a half of RAM here. 1.4 gigs um, and this machine is assigned 2 gigs so 70.1% of the RAMs used on this system the swap um, you know that kind of thing here I did let the system auto provision so if we take a look here you can see this is how it did the provisioning um, it looks like that it's using FXS for the file system type for the main drive here um, honestly I'm not that familiar with XFS um, but, you know, uh, I haven't had any issues in my testing with it so far, so hopefully I just won't need to uh, really deal with it much. But it seems to be working. Um, everything seems to be theming really good. I like their background here that they're using on the desktop. Let's go and do an update and see how many updates there is. I probably won't actually run the update um, while I'm making the video here, but let's just see. Okay, 175 packages are going to be upgraded, and there's four new packages to be installed. So look at all this here. You can see... You know, this is a pretty good chunk of updates here, but that's to be expected when you install a first system and it hasn't been updated yet. But I'm going to cancel all out of that. Let's look at Rhythmbox and see if it themes well on the GNOME desktop and just see how things go. Yep, looks like everything's working. And the reason I talk about the theming as an issue is if you go and, like, use some of the Snap packages, like in Ubuntu, for example, a lot of times they won't properly theme to your GTK theme. So that's why I bring that up, even though this is a GTK app. Um, but, you know, it seems to be working. Let's go and see what version they're shipping of this. 3.4.2. I'm not really a user of, of um, Rhythmbox, honestly, so I can't really say whether or not that's old, but I'm guessing it's pretty old. But again, it's CentOS. It's shipped for stability, um, you know, not for the latest and greatest, right? So that's kind of how that goes. Let's go take a look at GNOME software here and 
uh, yeah, so let's see what version they're shipping of that. Again, probably an old one, yeah. 3.30.6, I think that's pretty old. Again, I'm not 100% sure because I do all my installs through the command line on my Linux systems. Um, you've got an update for Cockpit here, and you've got a update for Firefox. And actually, Firefox, uh, they're not as far behind as I was saying, uh, 68. Um, I think that's about where it's supposed to be, actually. I mean, it's the um, the long-term support or whatever. What's it called? The ESR or something like that. The extended support, or I forget what it stands for. But anyways, it's the ESR or whatever, extended support version of Firefox, say, stripping. But um, from what I can tell, this particular build of Firefox... Um, you know, really nothing to write home about. I mean, it's just it's just Firefox. Uh, that being said, they they are have shipped a version, you know, several major version numbers up um, available for updates here. So uh, I'm kind of curious. Can I update to just it? I don't think I can. Yeah, I can. I'm, I was curious to whether or not that that one was the case. Let's look around here and see what the the software center has saying is going on. I may actually have to do an update before it gets the memo about all the applications. Wait, actually, maybe not, because there it's, it's showing some stuff. All right. So there you go. All right. Uh, you can do Adobe Flash add-on right there. So there you go. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good. I like Thunderbird, and so it's good to see they got Thunderbird in the repos. Um, again, so, you know, that's always nice. Um, it does seem like that it's a little bit uh, lacking here. Maybe I just need to do an update. Um, this was my experience when I installed it before in a VM. Um, I installed it on another machine in a VM um, the other day testing. A, I've had a, a bad cold, and so I've been kind of delayed on making videos because of that. And uh, so I was testing it out on, a, on my laptop during that time there. So, anyhow, let's see here. So we've got, you know, pretty much everything you can think of. they got Evolution here. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Evolution. Again, nothing really against it. I just, I like the way Thunderbird works, and um, I use Webmail a lot anyways, and when I don't use Webmail, I think Thunderbird's the way to go. But, again, nothing against Evolution. It's not a bad application. And let's go see here what the build is. Um... Well, here, oh, it's right here, 3.28.5, so, um, again, I'm not really sure because I don't use it if that's a pretty old build. Um, I will say I like the fact that it themes very well to the GTK. In fact, actually, I kind of have to say that kind of makes me want to use it over Thunderbird because I like applications that theme heavily to GTK correctly. I just, I like that. I want all my applications to look and feel you know, like that they're part of the system and, and, are, and are correct. Unfortunately, that's kind of hard to do. Uh, and there is times it's nice to have a custom-designed application, too. I mean, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I have to say I do like uh, my apps theming to GTK when possible. Um, so I'm just exploring the system here. This is the, the help center here. And so that's interesting. All help takes you to this screen. Oh, I thought it was just going to take me back to where I was, but no, it's... Oh, okay, so this is... I don't really look at these applications, some of them like this uh, in GNOME, because I don't really... I kind of know my way around the applications enough. I don't really need it, but um, interesting. Interesting little design. Interesting little design indeed. So I'm guessing I can do this to go back, yeah. And uh, like this one's about system monitor. You, Yeah, I mean... It's probably a web view. That's my guess of what this is. Um, but, you know, uh, simple enough. Seems interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it seems like a pretty good, uh, pretty good distro here. If you need it, you know you need it. And otherwise, I'd probably advise you to stay away from it. Not because it's horrible, but because it ships very old software. And it's really designed for server and enterprise use. And unless you kind of fall into those categories... Or want a really stable system that you can, you know, develop stuff on. I like to use it for systems that I need to just keep running for years upon years because CentOS has a 10-year lifespan uh, for support, and that's a long time to get support. And because this just came out, you've got 10 years if you install it from now. Uh, again, from the time I'm recording this, uh, which is the end of October, beginning of November time range in 2019 um, so so it should be supported for about 10 years 
even though I believe you can actually uh, request for more than that. Let's look at the files viewer here. And again, pretty expected for me. Um, and I noticed that known boxes did not eject the disk. I guess I'll go ahead and eject it. I don't think that will mess anything up. Yeah, the VM's still running, so I guess not. I will say GNOME Boxes runs really good. I know that's not what this video is about, but it's very smooth, and I like that. So let's see here. Uh, bar accidentally coming down is kind of annoying, but, you know, it's pretty good. All right, this is 3.28.1. Honestly, I don't really pay attention to these version numbers because the way I see it is I'm one of these users that doesn't mind if it's old, as long as it works and I can get the features I need. Now, if there's a feature I'm dying for, then that's different, but otherwise I don't really, don't really care. So there's really nothing else to write about home about on this distro here, but let's check the settings and see if there's anything in there, and I think that will probably be the end of the video. So you got the Wi-Fi, and this is a VM, so obviously it doesn't have it. And here you can see everything, uh, and, you know, it's being uh, virtualized with KVM, and, you know... You know, so you can see here, this is what it's, what we're emulating is an i7 in here, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you got your date time settings. I'm on Eastern time, so there you go. I also like the 24-hour format, but you can change it down here to AM, PM format, and see now it says 11.50 PM. I like it when it says 23.50 myself. Um, you can add users through this. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the standard GNOME settings tool, so... Um, I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're shipping an older version of it just like they do the GNOME desktop, but um, assuming you know the application, you can probably get around with it. So let's see if I add a user here. Let's just try. And then I'll just say, let's just call this username YouTube. So this is, this is YouTube. All right. And... Uh, yeah, we'll let them set up the password. Let's get enterprise login. This is like for domain access and stuff. Yeah. All right, just curious about that. Figured it was domain login stuff, but I wanted to take a look. That's what it used to be in CentOS. Uh, I don't I don't know about this, but like you could set up a domain on the older versions of CentOS and Red Hat 2. I think you had to do it in the command line. Maybe there was a way to do it in the Google. I think in CentOS 6 there was. Honestly, I really haven't paid attention to 7 because I've kind of, a lot of my systems that are GUI based have been on 6, and my 6 ones are probably going to move straight to 8, and then I have a couple servers and stuff I think that are running 7, um, but, you know, as far as, as far as CentOS uh, 7 goes, I haven't really used it very much. It's been 6 and uh, now 8 that's kind of taken the place. Uh, for me. Not that CentOS 7 is bad. I've tested with it and stuff, and it's even being used in production in some places for me. It's just um, I have 6 for desktop usage right now on some things, and uh, I'm probably going to move to 8, but, you know, on on some of those GUI-based systems, but I might move to uh, just to 7 um, in the next year. just depends on some different factors. But anyways, I think that pretty much covers the video. Uh, I guess we could look at the fonts viewer real quick, though. Uh, but I mean, really, there's nothing to write home about. It's just, it's a pretty standard, um, you know, reliable distro, in my experience. Really, I don't have issues uh, in the past. I haven't had issues with CentOS, and I've been running it um, in production for several years on some of my servers and stuff for different things. Um, my website doesn't run on CentOS. Actually, the hosting provider I host to actually does run it on CentOS, as far as I can tell. But, you know, I don't run that server, so I can't really speak to the reliability of that. But, like, I've got some uh, CentOS servers I use for different things, and uh, not the website, but other tasks. And I find that it works fine. So... Again, you know, uh, pretty reliable OS, especially if you're going to be doing some server stuff. Uh, just, you know, run the command line. Don't You don't really need the GUI for that. And, yeah, pretty cool. So, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Uh, you know, let me know what you think about CentOS 8 in the comments. And until next time, this is Vincent. I'll see you later.